Hey, I'm Alec, and on this Week in Build, I'm going to combine CNC carving and 3D printing to create custom wall-mounted air plants. Since I'm going to be doing some CNC carving for this project, I'm going to use the Shapoko XXL and the T-Track upgrade set because up until now, I've just been drilling straight through my material into the wasteboard in order to clamp it down. Whereas this new system will mean that I can just clamp it down using these supplied clamps and it won't mar or damage the actual workpiece I'm using. And because I'm using the Shapoko XXL, I don't need to cut down the wood that I have on some other hardware tool or some other machine in order to get it to fit. I can just slide it in, clamp it down and get carving. And then, because it's just really easy to change the different drill bits, I can just use a very large one to cut out most of the material, and then use a much finer one to be able to get really small details in there. Now let's break it down. So the air plant order of operations, or OO for short, I've already done a little concepting of how we're actually gonna hold the air plants up. Now if you aren't familiar with what an air plant is, it doesn't need soil, it doesn't need to be in any sort of pot, you can just have it kind of out in the open and you just give it a good misting when you feel that it's dry. So it can just hang on the wall and it'll be really easy to just use a hook that tabs into our part. Now this part can actually be printed or carved the way we design this. And I feel like it would look really nice if we had a backer piece, say like a hexagon, that's just simple shape. But then the second layer that is either 3D printed or carved that has a bunch of details on it. And then it has two little holes for this to tab into. So it'll be three parts that go together. Using the SVGs that Dylan designed, I threw them into Fusion 360 and made multiple bodies so that I could export them as separate 3D models. So I could have a back, a center, and then the loop that are all separate pieces that I could print individually. Then I dropped them into Matter Control, oriented them, and centered them in the build plate, and then sliced them and double checked the G code to make sure that everything was okay. Then from there, when I brought in the hexagon pieces, since they weren't touching, they were separate bodies, I could align them along the origin keep them all centered on each other, put them down, sliced it, double checked the G-code, and then went ahead and started these on a Pulse and an Ultimaker just to let them go and get things printed a little bit quicker. Now that I have the print started, I'm gonna go onto the Shapoko XXL and install the T-Track and clamping set. Now looking at their instructions online, it's pretty simple. I'm just gonna drill through everything and then screw it all together. They have two different options for installing it. You can either just drive the screws straight in or you can pre-drill them and then screw it in for just a cleaner attachment. You don't have the risk of bubbling up the MDF because it's really uh, brittle when you drive screws into it. So I'll do it the clean way rather than the quick way, but should be pretty easy to install. And then we can dive straight into carving using the clamping set. Following the instructions, I lined up the wood up against the edges flush, and then I used a nail to hammer through each of the holes, just enough to mark it so that I could go back with the supplied drill bit and pre-drill every single hole. And like I said, not required, but it'll just make for a better finished product in the end. Once I had everything pre-drilled, I went ahead and used all these screws that were provided using the longer ones to drill through the wood and the shorter ones to drill through all the T-tracks. It'd be helpful to use a clamp to tighten these all up and keep them nice and flush with each other, but just putting some weight on them and pulling them over as you drill in should be enough to keep them all flush. With the kit installed, I just had to jump into Carbide Create to take the vector files I already had, figure out the size of my workpiece, and just get it set up for carving, which was just required that I home it, set where the zero is for the X, Y, and Z, so it knows the thickness of my material, and then I can go ahead and get started. The T-Tracks made it really easy to just unclamp this and remove the workpiece. Now, the piece of plywood I used did have a pretty significant bow in it, so some parts were cut all the way through and others still had some wood holding it on. So I just used my pocket knife to cut it out, pop them out, and then I'll just go ahead and sand off some of that tear out and those harsher edges there to keep it nice and flush.
Now that everything is printed and carved and cleaned up, I'm gonna go ahead and start figuring out how I want to assemble these. I am second guessing the staining. I'd do that if I wanted to put a carved piece on top of another carved piece, but I'd rather incorporate 3D printing and carving into the same thing rather than just doing two of the same methods. However, I will use a blowtorch on some of the carved pieces to get a nice burning effect on it to give it some extra color and depth rather than it just being plain wood. And then glue up, I'm just gonna use super glue because that'll help attach the actual plastic up against the wood. Wood glue I don't think would do as good of a job. And then I didn't add tolerances to the hooks that go into them just based on whether it would fit into the printed parts or the carved parts a little differently. So what I'm gonna do there is use a little bit of the blowtorch to help soften things so I can just jam in the loops and get them to stay in there pretty solid. I hopefully won't need super glue, but some of those may end up not fitting quite as smoothly and need some super glue to hold them in there. So let's get to it. So a little super glue and a little bit of accelerant will really tack these on and hold them still. I'm not gonna use any sort of wood glue because it's not going to bite into the plastic. So super glue is the right choice here. And then a bit of the blowtorch to give it some character on this one specific tile. Now again, for this part, I did use a lot of super glue, but that's because I had a lot of different surfaces that if they didn't have super glue would more than likely kind of bow up when it was attached to the wood panel behind it. A little hook and loop adhesive on the back of these hexagon ones and I could hang them up on the hex tile wall. And then I could do the same for the other ones from the office using a level to make sure that they were hung up nice and proper. I really enjoyed this project. Anything to get a little greenery in the office is a project I will heavily endorse. And altogether, there was some 3D printing, there was some carving, a little glue up, but it was pretty quick to go from a basic idea one morning to a totally finished product the following afternoon. And it wouldn't have been possible without the Shapoko Double XL's large build volume, so I could just take a sheet of plywood from the local hardware store, slide it in, and then use the T-Track and clamping set, just clamp it down and get carving. I didn't need to come up with some complex solution, I could just get right to it. I hope you enjoyed this weekend build. I'm Alec from Atta Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you like that, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the big builds, how to's, and troubleshooting guides I'll be working on. And don't forget, check out matterhackers.com to explore everything 3D printing and to join the community.